we're going to create a wedge clamp which can be used to quickly create and assemble modular work holding setups in a spree. Control where everything is located to maximize the real estate in the machine and ensure no over travels. So we're going to create this pause wedge clamp and the way this functions is it's going to sit uh, you know between two work pieces and when you screw it down it pushes out and if we look at their website here uh, you can follow along if you want to grab any of these products here on their clamps download link so it's pauseworkholding.com so feel free to grab any of those so taking a look at it here we are going to go ahead and check out the orientation of the solid and we see when we bring it in that the z-axis is pointing sideways so this is going to sit on top of a machine table or something so we we want this z-axis to be pointing upward so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rotate my screen toward the bottom i'm going to go ahead and pick one of these bottom faces and then on the home so you have these tabs here on the home we're going to go ahead and pick a line z but i'm going to hold my shift key down so if I hold my shift key down and I click on that, you'll see that what it will do is align the Z with the Z pointing up into the face, basically into the solid model that I selected. So by doing that, um, we can, you know, you don't have to flip it again. So as an example, if I click align Z again, you'll see that it's facing the other way. I did not hold the shift key. So I'm going to do that again with the shift key so you can see the difference there. So when you use these commands for align X, Y, and Z, uh, you can use the shift or not the shift to get the desired result. So here I see uh, that this is, yes, it is three different solids. So I'm going to pick these two outside solids here, and I'm just going to come to properties, and I'm going to change the color to uh, black, but I'm going to scroll this up to about 80. And I do that just because it's when you when you make something totally black in a spree, it's it's too black on the uh, simulation. It's it's kind of a black blob. So what I'm doing here is just making it a kind of a dark gray to approximate what the product really looks like, just like here on the uh, on the web page. So looking at it, we're gonna go ahead and click this center, and I'm gonna pick this as this one. I use this one for steel. You can ignore these color changes if you want and then down here down at the bottom right I'm gonna click on propagation and here what I want to do is show on the face this is the third the third section down I'm gonna pick this closed pocket cavity and now if I again hold shift to engage propagation if I hold the shift key and I pick this top face you'll see that it will grab everything that's a closed loop that is a part of that face or within that face. So this is really nice because it would be a very tedious effort to pick, you know, a bunch of these things because there's not really good tangencies or uh, opposite edges here to do so. I'm going to hold my control key down and just basically deselect these faces here. And I'm going to then right click, say copy, attribute, color, black. I'm going to leave this black. And then when I click away, you'll see that the logo appears nicely on the uh, on that top face. So at this point, I can uh, look at the orientation and say, all right, well, uh, if I'm a machinist standing in front of maybe a Haas VF, I'm going to maybe have this aligned along X. So I'm going to take this whole thing, Control A, and then right click, copy, and I'm going to say rotate. And then we're going to move it 90 degrees. And yes, about the origin point, that is fine. And then when I kind of look down from the top here, I could see that this is centered about, uh, you know, this cavity here. There's a slight, you know, uh, straight portion here. So I'm just going to leave that alone. Um, this is going to expand in the X direction, which is what I want. And now I want to just create a uh, fixture and work 
workpiece adapter. And the reason for that is if I create a workpiece over here and then I load this and I snap it to the side of that workpiece using this, this side face, let's say, I might want to mount another workpiece or fixture that this would sit up against to you know hold it as we expand this downward uh, on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and create basically here an FA underscore one and a WA underscore one. And now uh, when I do that, if I moved this workpiece, this first workpiece that this is tied to, that would move, this, this, this wedge clamp would move with that workpiece, but so would the other fixture and the other workpiece. So if I'm trying to fit this on my table, I want all of these tied together. Uh, I, that's why I'm creating this. So you would want to do that typically with any uh, fixture such as this that you would use as a clamp um, that would be up against another item, okay? So now at this point, uh, the orientation, the location, the rotation, the coloring is good. Uh, pretty much I'm ready to go ahead and say file, save as, and we're gonna come down here and save this as a GDML, which is a fixture type GDML, and I'll just save this under my existing folder. And now we can go ahead and use this on the machine. So we have our machine. This is a standard you know, three axis mill. I'm gonna turn off the sheet metal just so we can see the table. And the first thing I'm gonna do on the machine itself is I'm gonna to come to fixture. So I'm gonna load that wedge clamp that we just did. And actually, let me shift this over in X, let's say five inches or so. Uh, maybe make that 10 inches or so. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load my workpiece onto this. And imagine if we had some kind of block or something that was here uh, holding this clamp, or if this was a different clamp or, you know, whatever. Again, this is just an example to show how it could be loaded and used as an assembly. So from here, I'm going to say, let's go ahead and add a workpiece. And using this, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of pop this guy up in space. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick this face and then this face here and zoom back out just so you see it. When I hit the alignment mating, and if you want to pick two faces like this, you want to make sure that you hold control when you're doing that. Then hit the alignment and you'll see that it will align those two pieces together. And now what I'm going to do is pick without control the top of the table and then the bottom of the workpiece. I'll rotate that back down and then just go ahead and snap that to the top of the table. Now what I can do is, and this is important, we want to go back and pick this same wedge clamp here. So make sure that you have that clamp or whatever fixture that you want to build the assembly from. Uh, selected and then you're going to go and do fixture again. I'm going to load another one of these and it's right on top so I'm going to come here and just say negative we'll just make it a big number like 16 inches or something and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, come in here to this guy. I accidentally hit enter. I'm going to pick this side face rotate and holding control. I'm going to pick that side face and then I'm just going to snap it and you see that that moves. And now I can do the same thing with another workpiece. And here now I can add the workpiece to this one or this one, it doesn't really matter. I'll add it to this one. So I'll add another workpiece. And because I need to move that up because I, when I created my stock, I put it at the center at P0. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this face. Actually, let's do the sides again. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that one with no control. Then holding control, I'm going to grab this side and then snap the two. And now I can go ahead and pick the top of the table and the bottom of the workpiece. Snapping that, that will move. And we can continue to do this as many times as we want. So let's see what happens when I want to move my workpiece around. So here we have two pieces of stock and I wanna come here and, and I wanna move them over or maybe I wanna put something else over here. So I'm gonna shift these over 
in the positive x direction. I could just double click this and from 10 I could make that 15. And you'll see that everything moves. My entire uh, you know, work holding, fixturing assembly will move with that first clamp. Okay, so you could see the hierarchy there. Even though I put this workpiece on top of this clamp in the center, um, they will all move when I shift this, basically this parent fixture right here. So anytime I shift something, if I want to move this four inches in Y to the back of the table, or maybe I got a bad back, <laughs> I want to put this to the front of the table, uh, I can move that over no problem whatsoever. So when you're making your fixturing, think about th those things. If, you know, just as a default, you might want to add at least, you know, an extra. If you don't have any, you know, you want to make sure that you have a fixture adapter and a workpiece adapter. So that is it for this one. Hopefully this helps you guys make some awesome looking and very accurate fixturing setups for your machine.